Let's stay with the Supreme Court for a moment where that court has reserved judgment in the appeal by Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf of Kano State, challenging the ruling of the appeal court that sacked him from office. Now, Justice Yang Okoro led five member panel of judges reserved the decision after hearing the closing arguments from both parties. Yusuf and his party, the New Nigeria People's Party, had filed an appeal against the Court of Appeals November 17 ruling, which declared the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Yusuf Gawuna, as the winner of the March 26, 2023 governorship poll. The appeal court sitting in Abuja upheld the ruling of the tribunal that sacked Yusuf and declared Gawuna of the APC the winner of the March 18 election. The tribunal led by Justice Oluyemi Osadebe had nullified uh, the election of Yusuf by declaring 165,663 of his votes invalid. The tribunal also held that the ballot papers were not signed nor stamped by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Well, to further discuss this tonight, we're joined by Ivan Sufeli. He's a legal practitioner. Ivan, thank you so very kindly uh, for your time. Uh, as you heard, Nigeria Supreme Court has reserved judgment indefinitely. Please explain to us the, the possible reasons for this delay and uh, the implications this could have on this case. Well, the, the Supreme Court still have time. I mean, under the law, the Supreme Court have a 60 days with it to determine um, this judgment, to determine the case under reference. So the appeal was filed uh, less than a month ago, or a month and, uh, uh, no, less than a month ago, or just about a month when the appeal was filed, which is about 30 days. So the Supreme Court still have roughly uh, another 30 days. Okay, so uh, the, what the Supreme Court have done is still within the ambit of the law. Uh, it has not uh, overshoot the time allowed by law to make a pronouncement on the issue under reference. But it's a good thing that both sides have uh, argued uh, their case and have made their submission uh, as to uh, what the provision of the law is. I mean, we've seen that... Uh, the NNPP candidate, you know, actually lost at the tribunal and uh, also at the Supreme Court and uh, at the Court of Appeal. Now the Supreme Court is here to determine that and the argument have been fully presented before the court. And the Supreme Court will do the needful in the days to come. The fact that um, there's no specific date given does not mean uh, it's going to take forever for the Supreme Court to determine that case. The Supreme Court will determine the case before the time that is allowed by the Constitution elapsed on the case under reference. All right. So both sides have done what they should do by law, and that is to present their appeal before the court. Let the court now uh, give a decision mm. as to which angle okay, it's, it wants to go to. Okay. The fact that... Uh, yeah, if, if I just to, to chip in here, uh, you, you've painted a picture for us, you helped us understand what is at play here um going forward i'm not asking you to preempt the court or to decide who they should uh, or suggest who they should in whose favor they should rule uh, but what legal precedents is or legal principles are likely to be at play you know in the minds of these judges what legal precedents and principles will they consider in making their final judgment you know if you look at section uh, six of the 1999 Constitution, the court is established for a particular purpose. And the purpose for which the court is established is to ensure that justice is not only done, but manifestly done. So the Supreme Court's duty is a search for justice. It's also a search to state whether or not the courts below erred in law or they did what they are supposed to do by law to ensure justice. Now, if you look at the case, Two issues come up uh, prominently. That, you know, Yusuf was not a member of the Republican Party as at the time he contested the election. That was one. And that two, that a huge chunk of the number of votes that he scored were not signed, still and stamped by INEC. Those were the two issues that the APC used at the tribunal 
and the Court of Appeal. Okay? Now, these two issues are quite um, controversial. They are controversial in the sense that if you look at the issue of membership of political party, it does not lie in the mouth of another political party to determine whether a person was validly uh, nominated in his political party or not. It's an internal wrangling of the party that uh, you don't need um, uh, a cross, someone from a cross reference party to make that a, 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 a assertion. That is one of it, which boils down to relation issue that would have been contested within the same party during the primaries. That was what, what it should be by law. The second has to do with the number of uh, votes called um, that were not stamped. Uh, the doctrine of equity is actually that uh, to ensure justice, you don't actually visit the sins of an institution's own litigants. Okay, if, you know, uh, the litigants uh, have approached the court to seek redress, and you are saying because of the action or inaction of an institution, therefore, the party who the, the, the dereliction of the duty of the institution affected adversely cannot go ahead just because the institution, which the litigant does not have control over, that does not amount to manifest justice. So uh, whichever oh. way it goes, the Supreme Court will decide because this at this level, it is the last um, uh, threshold for which justice will be handed down. But I don't see, I don't see, in, uh, at the risk of not preempting the Supreme Court, I do not think the last, the two courts, I do not agree with the uh, uh, oh. the first court and the tribunal and the court of appeal. Okay. I do not agree with that submission because to me, it, it does not present a case of justice. It is quite oppressive to, to do that. Okay, that's my own perception about it. But the Supreme Court can take okay. a different decision, okay. whichever way it is. Okay. The, Supreme Court, the Supreme Court can even root out an issue that, you know, is not contem contemplated by... But, but, but even program. talking about, you know, what the tribunals uh, and the appeal court uh, came up with, or the court of appeal, rather, um, at this final uh, appeal court, which is Supreme Court now, do you think that what was the judgment in the presidential election appeals that went to the Supreme Court might set the tone uh, for which way these justices may look. Because maybe we can argue that something similar, if not the same, uh, was on the table for the presidential election petitions. Well, uh, yeah, there's a sense in which um, uh, the Supreme Court will follow its precedent, even though it has the prerogative to overrule itself if it so wishes. But the truth is that the um, regular principle of law is that when a president has been established, like in the case of the presidential election, um, and the Supreme Court has settled some issues, okay, those issues, when they arise in other cases, the Supreme Court is most likely going to toe the same line. The similarities in the case abound. We have seen certain similarities, and these similarities uh, they are still predicated on the discretion of the Supreme Court to so decide. Because if you look at it deeply, similarities or not, uh, no two cases are the same. No two cases are the same. Uh, because uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you look at it, the governorship election, how be it that uh, you have similarity in this case, the case of Kano and that of uh, what that was decided by the presidential electoral, election tribunal, um, they cannot be absolutely the same, but similarities are bound. Okay. So where similarities, you know, flow right. through, the Supreme Court is most likely going to uh, toe the, to the oh. same lines as right. established already. Uh, uh, regardless of the Supreme Court's decision, you know, uh, whichever way it goes, uh, what are the political and social, you know, ramifications of the judgment, which regardless of whoever wins, for Kano State? Uh, are there possibilities we might have you know, societal unrest, uh, political instability, uncertainty, um, whichever the way the pendulum swings. 
there, there is already political unrest in, in, in Kano, as you speak. Kano have a long history of fire. Uh, political, uh, you know, uh, riots and arrests from the Kano riot of 1953 to eight. The, the, there is that that proclivity or tendency that uh, because um, the two uh, actors uh, how be it that they are sharply divided, they have supporters in very huge country. Is the, the political flashpoint of the country, Kano, Lagos, Portacot, uh, Abuja, and uh, Kaduna, they have that semblance of um, having huge political quotient, capital. And that political quotient or capital calls for followership. And this followership, um, they have a tendency to go to the streets already when the tribunal, when the tribunal gave that judgment, though there was no widespread um, as it were in the court of appeal judgment. Um, they, I think the tribunal judgment, they did it even by by uh, Zoom. Zoom. Uh, virtual, virtual uh, uh, judgment. The yeah. judgment was delivered virtually. Yeah. And then you get to the court of appeal, there was a really widespread uprising. Someone was even killed uh, at, at that time before that arrest was quelled. Now, at the level of the Supreme Court, to whichever way the Supreme Court goes, there's a tendency that a certain this will not sit down well with certain persons. And they, the, the court will have to bear this in mind and determine exactly how it's going to deliver that judgment. But my, my pro proposal will be that the federal government will have to deploy more security um, to that right. part of the country right. before the Supreme Court delivered that judgment okay. to ensure that after the judgment, they're able to curtail the essences of the followers uh, who may want to ferment trouble or use the, the, the pronouncement to create a situation where there will be a breakdown of law and order. That is very probable. Okay. So the, the, the federal government must be proactive about this, given the sensitive nature of the decision the Supreme Court is going to hand over. The Supreme Court is not going to rule that both parties won the election. It's going to rule that one person won the election and the other uh, lost. And uh, that may also spark uh, some issues right. of violence. Ivan Sufeli, it's been a pleasure having you. We'll watch that space to see what happens going forward. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.